The Samsung Galaxy S26 series is coming soon, and it looks like Samsung is going back to a decision that many fans won't be happy about. According to reports, Samsung will release two different versions of its new flagship phones, depending on where you live. In Europe and a few other places, the Galaxy S26 will come with Samsung's own Exynos 2600 processor. Meanwhile, in the US and many other countries, the phones will have Qualcomm's Snapdragon chip, most likely the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 or the new Snapdragon 8 Elite 2. This decision feels like a step backward because, with the Galaxy S25 series, Samsung finally made all models worldwide use the same Snapdragon chip. That move was popular with fans because Exynos chips have had a history of being weaker than their Snapdragon rivals. In the past, Exynos chips often struggled with things like heat, battery life, and gaming performance. Samsung has been working hard to improve its Exynos processors. The new Exynos 2600 is built on Samsung's advanced 2mm technology, which is supposed to be faster and more efficient. However, according to experts, Samsung hasn't been able to produce enough of these chips yet. The yield rates, meaning how many good chips come out of the factory, aren't high enough for a global launch. So Samsung has decided to use Exynos only in certain regions, like Europe, where it makes more sense financially or where people might be less upset about it. Interestingly, Samsung originally wanted to use the Exynos 2600 in every Galaxy S26, phone worldwide. This would have helped them rely less on Qualcomm in the future. But because of problems with production, they had to change those plans, at least for now. On the bright side, Samsung might be making a deal with Qualcomm to manufacture Snapdragon chips at Samsung's own factories. If this happens, it would be a big win for Samsung because it would boost the company's chip-making reputation and help them make more money in the long run. Right now, it seems like Europe will get the Exynos 2600-powered Galaxy S26, while most other countries will get the Snapdragon version. This isn't the first time Samsung has done this. With the Galaxy S22 series, for example, Europe also received Exynos versions while others got Snapdragon. Many customers weren't happy back then, and it looks like the same thing could happen again. It's also not clear if this chip difference will affect all Galaxy S26 models. Some leaks suggest that the regular S26 and S26 Plus might come with Exynos in Europe, but the top-of-the-line Galaxy S26 Ultra could use the Snapdragon chip everywhere, like Samsung did with the Galaxy S24 Ultra. This would mean that no matter where you buy the Ultra, it will have the same powerful Snapdragon chip inside. Personally, I still believe Exynos has potential. Apple has done amazing things with its own M-series chips, and Samsung likely wants to follow a similar path. Having in-house chips could give Samsung better control over how its phones work and help them improve overall performance. Samsung's progress from making 3 nanometer chips to working on 2 nanometer chips is impressive. Maybe if they had used a 3 nanometer version of the Exynos 2600, production would have gone smoother. But Samsung took a risk by jumping ahead to 2 nanometers, and now they're paying the price with lower production rates. At the end of the day, most every day, users might not notice a big difference between Exynos and Snapdragon phones during normal use. But tech fans and people who closely follow smartphone technology definitely will. For them, this decision feels like a bit of a letdown. So, while the Galaxy S26 series will still be a powerful and impressive set of phones, the chip differences will likely remain a hot topic, especially in Europe. We'll have to wait and see. If this strategy works out for Samsung, or if they'll finally manage to make Exynos chips good enough for a global release in the future.